Through decades of film and literature, and real life, this scenario repeats itself. A book, generally a Bible, that saves the holder's life by stopping the bullet. We wondered if this was really possible, so we chose to put the myth to the test. Like, okay, so now we're going to do a model and show you guys what we're going to do with the actual guns. So here we have a very dangerous weapon that will model how a gun works. Because it's like a gun, except the bullets are squishy. And it's only a little less powerful. So beware, evildoers. Mr. has a Nerf gun. Okay, let's see if this works. Ready? Goal is to hit the whiteboard. Oh, hi. Okay, ready? Two. So, how does this all work out? Well, there are a few things we know. First of all, the mass of the bullet. The mass is how much stuff, how much matter the bullet has. Generally, and for the purpose of this video, this is measured in kilograms. However, with bullets, this is generally measured in grains which is measured by a scale. We also know the velocity, or the speed, of the bullet. Generally, for bullets, this is measured in feet per second. But for our purposes, we're going to measure in meters per second. A third measurement that we have is momentum. Momentum can be gained or lost, but only through transfers. It cannot be created or destroyed. It is equal to mass times velocity. We know that this bullet is going to be completely stopped by the book. So we know that the impulse, or the change in momentum, is going to be equal to the momentum, because it's going from that number to zero. The impulse also equals force times a change in time. Unfortunately, we don't know this change in time, so we can't find the force. The force is what we're looking for because it's equivalent to mass times acceleration, and we can compare it to other measurements in daily life. Therefore, we can use another measurement, which is kinetic energy. We can calculate kinetic energy by multiplying the mass times the square of the velocity, then dividing this by 2. However, kinetic energy also equals another measurement, work. Work is measured in joules. And work is equal to force times distance. We know the distance. This is how deep into the books the bullet went. So if we divide the work by that, we can find the force that the book applies on the bullet. So the first question we have is, uh, what is your experience with this kind of thing? With firearms? Yeah. Well, I'm the lead firearms instructor for the Washington State Criminal Justice Training Commission. I've been shooting a firearm since I was five years old, and I'm 35 years now. I'm 35 years old now. Uh, so I've been shooting quite a bit, and uh, I've been an instructor for about nine years. Software engineer. But my experience with firearms, I've been shooting since I was a kid. Uh, I'm an NRA certified uh, basic rifle instructor, firearm safety instructor, and range safety officer. So. I've been around firearms a bit. Okay. And uh, what do you think is going to happen with uh, the 40, the 12 gauge, if we shoot it, and the 308, if we shoot that? Um, the 40, I think, um, well, as mentioned before, I, it's going to be dependent on the bullet construction. Mm -hmm. But I'd expect it to penetrate at least two phone books, maybe three or four. So. Okay. And then uh, the second thing is, what do you think the results for this project are going to be? For each gun. For each gun. Okay. And then what about the 12 gauge if we shoot it? I really want to see what that does. Uh, I'll go out on a limb and say four or five phone books. Okay. And then if we shoot the 5 308, what uh -huh. do you think is going to happen? That's going to be fun. That's going to uh, probably be uh, penetrate deeper than anything else. Okay. So really deep. It's, Six, seven, eight, nine, it's ten. It's going to have a good bit of momentum. Yeah, I, um, 
just to be consistent with my other guesses, then let's go with a minimum of uh, six inches and maybe even, um, or I'm sorry, six phone books, maybe uh, maybe even seven. Ooh, wow, that's got to be a lot. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. And like the 22 long rifle, uh, I believe it'll penetrate probably one of your textbooks, but probably it won't go all the way through a phone book if it's one of the thicker versions, depending on the bullet construction. But it, out of a handgun, it's not traveling that fast, so probably okay. won't uh, won't go through a full phone book. That's just my prediction. And then for the rifle? For the 22? 22. Uh, 22 rifle. Uh, if it's a 22 long rifle, it'll be traveling faster, so it may make it all the way through a phone book on that. Okay, and then how far do you think for one of the other? That's all. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So that was interesting, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense out of context. So let's take a look at what happened. You know what? It stopped at cold. Wow. 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 Actually, that happened to be the only shot that we were able to stop with this book. Fairly thick. So let's take a look at the book. Well, this is where the bullet is. And if we take a look at the bullet, it's in a really interesting form. It doesn't quite look how it used to. Now let's put this in another setting where our bullet is represented by a car and our book is represented by a wall. As shown in the video, the, when the car hits the wall, it collapses. This is because the wall applies force on the car. The book also applies force on the bullet and it must apply equal force and this causes the bullet to change shape. Let's think back to our idea of force. We know that this bullet weighs about 40 grains, or a very small kilogram number, something like 0 0.0025. We also know that it's traveling at about 1,050 feet per second as, at, once it leaves the muzzle, or about 320 meters per second. So if we use the equation we talked about earlier, that means that our bullet is exerting nearly 5,700 newtons of force. And equivalently, the book must exert that much force to stop the bullet. Now that number might not mean that much to you, but let's think of it in a more daily way. Another unit of force that we know pretty well is weight. And this is because it not only takes mass into consideration, but also gravity. So your weight changes as you travel around the universe. 5,700 newtons is about 1,300 pounds. Now that's about the weight of a small car. That's quite a bit. And remember, that's only for just the 22 pistol, the smallest gun we tested and the least powerful. Think about how much more powerful the rest could be. I think we're pretty sure about the result of our myth now. Did it, it make it? I'm not sure about the site. I made it through. That's true. Well, that went in there a bit. I think it went through less than the closer one. Yeah, well, it's about average. That's an inch and a half. Yeah, oh, this but book is smaller though, isn't that's it? That's the thing. So we're still at two and a half inches about. Okay, so.
So what do we find out? Well, let's look at some of our results. Our first trial was with two different guns from seven yards. Now that's about a little less than the length of two cars fender to fender. Our first gun was a 22 pistol, which you can see right here. The distance into the book, which that went, into this book actually, was about one inch, 0.9 inches uh, to be precise. So if you were to find a book that would stop that, this is about 0.8 inches, so it would be slightly thicker than this book. Rome fell today. Our second gun was a 40 caliber gun, so that's a quite a bit bigger bullet. Also from 7 yards, that one went 3.5 inches into the book that we tested it in, which is this book. Actually, this book is less than 3.5 inches. It went into the phone books that we had stacked up behind it. This was a stack of phone books that we had behind our books that we shot. So if you can imagine seven yards, as I explained it earlier, ten yards is a bit over the length of two cars fender to fender. Our first test at ten yards was actually the same 22 pistol that I showed you earlier. The two books that we shot were this one and this one. The Rota Omaha, which is about 1.5 inches thick, and Rome Fell Today, which is what we used earlier, a 0.8 inch book. And this time, it went 2.5 inches into the book. Even though 2.5 inches might not seem like that much, it's actually thicker than this book. So you'd need a really thick book to be able to stop a 22 bullet from hitting you. Our second gun that we tested was the same 40 caliber pistol. This time, it also went 3.5 inches in, which, once again, is much thicker than any book that we had, except for the phone books, which we kept behind that. Our 40 caliber pistol with a hollow point, the police version of the pistol, went 4.5 inches into our book. Our 22 rifle, so our big rifle that used the same ammo as our first pistol, went 2.75 inches into our books. Our next gun, the 223 rifle, which is an AR-15, one of the most common uh, military rifles, went 6.75 inches into it, into the books. And our final gun that we tested at 10 yards was the 12 gauge shotgun, which went 4.25 inches into the books. The final distance that we shot from was 25 yards. So if you can imagine, that's about twice the length of a school bus. Our measurements were for the 223 rifle, 12 inches, so a foot. For the 22 rifle, so the smaller rifle, it was two and a half inches. For the 308 rifle, so the bigger version of the 223 rifle, we had nine inches. And finally, for our 223 rifle with a varmint round, we have three inches. For all you number geeks out there, here are some of our other numbers in the sense of force. So our results for force ended up being a, quite a bit different. With some of them, they seemed a bit strange actually. For example, at 10 yards, the 22 pistol bullet actually seemed to have less force than at 7 yards. And similarly, the 22 rifle appeared to have less force than a 22 pistol. That didn't make a whole lot of sense, but there are some numbers that did. For example, the 12-gauge shotgun at 10 yards had 23,000 newtons of force. And equivalently, that's how much the book had to exert on it. Another way of saying that is that was about 5,000 pounds of force. Now, the average car weighs about 4,000 pounds, so that's an entire ton more than the average car. Being exerted by books, that's pretty significant. However, similarly significant is the fact that the bullet is exerting that much force. Once again, I think we have pretty well proved our point that this myth 
isn't quite logical. The conclusion we drew from our many tests was that while a book could stop a bullet, it would cause a lot of impact on your back. And most books couldn't stop most bullets.